country where cricket is held regularly, unlike in America, and taking on Afghanistan, which has a not caring attitude. How do you see this match? Yeah, I mean, firstly, um, it was good to play in New York. I, I thought, you know, um, I thought um, all the three games that we played were really well attended, which is fantastic. Um, but it's also now lovely to come to the Caribbean, uh, you know, come to Barbados, um, to come to this ground which has a great history um, and a great tradition of cricket um, in this country and in this region, uh, you know, is, is fantastic as well and we're really looking forward to it. We've um, had a couple of days of really good practice um, and we feel we're ready, uh, we feel we're rested, we feel we're prepared. Um, and we know Afghanistan is a very dangerous team in this format of the game. They've got, uh, they've shown their performances in this World Cup. But also, I think if you just look at their squad, I mean, they might not have a lot of international experience as in, in the other formats of the game. But a lot of their uh, players do play in a lot of T20 leagues, more than, in fact, some of uh, our players do. But uh, they, they are, you know, sort of well-traveled uh, uh, cricketers, especially in the T20 circuit, T20 league, a lot of them. Um, they're very prominent members of their IPL teams, other teams as well. So, uh, certainly in this format, they're not a team to be taken lightly. Uh, they're deservedly in the Super 8s. Uh, and we will not uh, treat them any differently as we would treat any other team that we expect to play in the Super 8s. Rahul, uh, uh, in India and uh, Indian team generally used to playing white ball cricket under lights. So, in all games now onwards, even in New York, uh, where will we are in the day? So new factor kept aside that is eliminated anyway. What with the challenges for the Indian team to you know play in the daytime white ball cricket? Uh, like you said, it's slightly different for this generation of cricketers. They don't play a lot of games at 10:30. But look, I, I don't think it's you know it's it's too much of a hassle once we've once you get used to it. Once you get your mind around it, uh, you know as we have, uh, you know there are some obviously factors that. Like you said rightly, the dew might the dew will not be a factor. So not something that we would consider at a, say for a 10:30 game. But then there are other things which you might consider, like the slowness of the pitch or other factors that you would consider when it is a day game. So there are certain, I'd say, tactic, tactical things that might be slightly different. But other than that, you know, to be honest, it's uh, you know I think it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Uh, the guys are. Used to it now, I think there'll be great crowds uh, even for this game, whether it's at 10.30 or whether it's at 8 o'clock. I expect most India games to have very good crowds. Um, so I think from that perspective, uh, I don't really think it makes too much of a difference. Rahul, you spoke about a flexible batting order, something that Rohit also alluded to, saying that the openers will be static and the rest will change depending on the situation. Is it something that is specific to a T20 perspective or do you see this happening across formats going forward? Not just for India, I'm just saying in a larger perspective. Uh, I, I, just think, I, I just think each situation is unique. Uh, I, I think each situation is unique. It's hard, to, um, it's hard to keep something set in stone. At least that's my belief. I, I, I always do believe in uh, being flexible in your thinking, um, being able to adapt to situations. What does your team require? What do the conditions require? Uh, I think it's something that we've always been conscious of, uh, the concept of being able to have uh, players who can be adaptable and float in that middle order if and when required. Um, and it's something that you know we've continuously strive, striven to do uh, as and when required and as and when possible, not just for the sake of it. A lot of times you make these changes, you know, keeping something specific in mind, keeping something uh, it works sometimes, it doesn't work sometimes, and that's not, uh, you know, I think you can't judge everything only on the results. You always have to go be go behind and see what is the thinking behind some of these things. So, yeah, various situations will demand. I mean, the Pakistan game, we moved Aksar up the order. There was a specific thinking around it. You know, there, there are other situations we've moved Rishabh a little bit uh, up the order in this thing. So there's been a little bit of thinking around that. So, yeah, there's a lot of thought that goes into some of these things, and um, we do think about it. But... Again, I, I mean, I don't think the test format will have too many flexibilities. Uh, one day cricket, again, we are seeing that, depending. But I think in the T20 format, especially with the matchups, um, with the dimensions of ground, with the kind of conditions, uh, you do see it happening quite a lot more in the, in the T20 format, where I guess every over or every 10 balls 
is actually cr quite critical and matters much more than probably it does in another format. So uh, I think most teams, I think, are trying to make use of that, trying to make use of matchups, trying to uh, make use of the best use of their resources to try and get maximize the 120 balls that they can. Rahul, you, of course, as a player, you've played here. Uh, not the best memories of the 97 test, I'm sure. Jeez, uh, thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's some other decent memories also in life. Good, well, so yeah, that, that is actually my question. So a chance for you to probably uh, make new and much better memories tomorrow. God, man, I'm not trying to make new anything, man. I don't, I move on from things very quickly. I think that's one of my things. Uh, I don't look back on things. I look, try and do what I'm doing now at the moment. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not concerned about what happened in 97 or some other year and, you know, <laughs> Whether by by winning this, that, you know, yeah, if if you had told me that by winning this, you would ensure that instead of scoring whatever we scored 80, we would make it 121, then I would be bothered. But uh, even if we win this match tomorrow, unfortunately, that is still going to remain 80 on the scorecard. <laughs> you know, <laughs> however much I might try and will it. Uh, so no, I do not think about any you know retribution or thinking back and looking at it. It's not, I move on from things. Uh, what's in front of me? What's here? Uh, good or bad, you know, it's not a, uh, I think it's one of the things I've, I don't think of myself too much as a player anymore. Um, and yeah, it's just move on, focus on tomorrow, try and get a good result tomorrow, prepare the team as best as we can. Rahul, uh, Rahul, outfield dimension ke baare mein aap kya kahoge yaha ke, kyunki maine rakta hai, T20 cricket mein, kyunki thoda sa slope bhi hai, much better outfield compared to New York, aap kaise dekhte ho isko? Yeah, I, th I think again that's a factor you will consider. Just like I answered the earlier question, uh, sometimes you uh, you consider tactical things. Obviously, uh, while dew may not be a factor, maybe the wind could be a factor in in this place. Uh, the wind blows uh, quite strongly from one side to the other. Uh, like you said, the tact the boundary sizes might be smaller on one side, bigger on one side. Uh, there's a bit of a slope. It's a, it could probably be a quicker outfield than what we experienced in in New York. So. Again, we'll have to adjust, we'll have to adapt. Um, we've discussed these things, to be very honest, we've had some really fruitful meetings over the last couple of days, uh, both as a, you know, as a leadership group and even with the players, uh, quite a few individual chats as well, um, you know, team chats. Uh, so yeah, so a lot of these points have come up, um, you know, and there's a lot of intelligence in the group. It's not just uh, us as coaches talking to the players, but so many of these players have played so many games. Um, you know, they have a lot of experience. We've in fact, in our squad, we think we have seven or eight guys who captain teams uh, regularly. So there's a lot of intelligence, a lot of conversations, a lot of ideas that do come come out and, you know, become part of the discussion. So, yeah, really been happy with some of the chats we've been having uh, over the last few days and, and really hope we can now execute, you know, some of the things. And that's the most important thing is the ability to execute. Um, ideas are good, I think. We've got really good ideas, good plans. Uh, but you need to be able to execute them to then for them to look good as well. Rahul, uh one of one of the impetuses uh, for you as a as a leadership was to become more proactive when batting and you know being okay with taking risks. Whereas when you came here for the World Cup, you were presented with completely different conditions to which you all adjusted very well. But again, it was three matches at the same venue. Now you're coming into the business end and you've you're getting a new venue every time. And uh, especially if you're put in, and if you go three four overs. Uh, if you like, even if you go three, four overs without like really assessing the conditions really well, that can, you know, cost you the game. So, how do you go about? Uh, what are the best practices you put in to go about mitigating that kind of a misstep? So, um, like you, I mean, like you rightly said, a uh, lot of the impetus over the last few years, and I think we've done it in most parts, has actually been to be able to push the needle forward. I mean, if you look at a lot of our stats and our numbers, and we look at these things quite a lot. Uh, is we have pushed the needle forward uh, in terms of our batting. Uh, there's no question about it. Uh, sometimes in certain conditions, you know, uh, you've just got to be mindful of conditions also. I think sometimes we just get uh, carried away in T20 cricket and just talking about pushing the needle forward, pushing the needle forward. But then, you know, it, it's also cricket is a very condition-specific game. It's one of the only sports left where the surface makes such an impact on, on, on the actual skill levels, the actual performance levels, what is an acceptable performance level, you know, it's one, it's, it's the one sport that we play that where the surface makes a huge difference and it has to be brought into uh, consideration at all times. And I think, I think we saw that in the US and we saw that in New York, um, that, that had to be brought into consideration, not only for us, but for 
other teams as well. I think everyone had to do that. Um, actually, even in Australia, at some times, you know, there were times in that where you had to bring that into into consideration. Um, you know, not every wicket is uh, Hyderabad, or not every wicket can be the same. Um, so, and I think that's something we pride ourselves in as well. I think we are trying to also get that ability to be smart in our decision making, to try and assess situations cleverly. Uh, we feel we've got the experience and the nows, and also the ability to uh, counteract different situations uh, that may present themselves. Um, and and then of course we are looking at things at the past games that have been played here. What have been the scores? What's the level of swing that people are experiencing? Amount of turn they're getting? What's the bounce? So we'll, you look at all of these factors and you come up with some basic ideas as what you might think as a thing. But again, I think you know you've got to keep an open mind. I think that's an important thing. You can't. You might have all the stats. You might have all the data. But on the day, sometimes conditions can be very different to what you think it is. Just because. A particular ground has produced certain number of runs um, in the past, or even in the even in ten days prior, uh, it can be very different because the preparation of a wicket, um, how the weather, so much can change. Even in the two or three days leading into a particular game, uh, a lot can change that can force you to sometimes recalibrate and rethink. So, I think we'll have to do that. We'll have to be quickly, quick and smart, and be able to do that. And um, and assess the conditions, and and I hope we'll you know we'll we'll do that. If we want to succeed in this tournament, like you rightly said, teams are going to play in different venues. All teams are going to have to be quick in adapting and, and assessing those situations. Yeah. And also, I just wanted to know that you know, on those drop-in pitches in New York, uh, we had eight batsmen in the in, in our batting lineup. But considering the con the conditions over here and some of the teams who who has played all the matches over here. Some wrist spinners are doing really well, like Adam Zampa, Adil Rasid. So, does that um, come into the scheme of things as well, going into the Super 8 stage? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've built our squad believing that anyone in the 15 is uh, can come into the side and play. Uh, a lot of thought has gone into the squad, keeping all kinds of conditions in mind. Uh, we're lucky that we've got a few all-rounders in the mix that allow us to be able to to do that. So, like you rightly said, even though in New York we had eight uh, batting options, we also had seven bowling options. So we had uh, both sides covered to a large extent. Yes, of course, the risk guys that we left out in those games, um, to be honest, are all quality players, quality performers. Each, Any one of them actually coming into your squad, if you were to look at it, man for man will not make your squad a weaker squad. Uh, it's just that the conditions and what we felt was the requirement in that particular venue uh, made us go with that particular combination where we felt that there wasn't a huge role for spin and it was more a pace bowler's kind of uh, conditions. And we also wanted to ensure that we had the depth on those tricky kind of wickets if if, if and when required. Uh, so that's what we went there with. Here it might be different, uh, you know, obviously uh, without giving too much away, certainly, um, you know, it might be slightly different here. We might need feel the need that we might need an extra spinner and then certainly, you know, someone like Kuldeep or Yuzi uh, with their quality and their skill. Uh, do come into play and uh, you know do become really big factors for us and that is the thinking in which why they have been selected because we knew that conditions could be potentially different in each of the different islands or each of the different uh, countries. I mean, I think we'll just have, you, like I said, there's no point going in with a preconceived notion of deciding that this is uh, what we'll do. Um, really important for us to recognize that, like I said, I think they have a good spinner, good attack, good bowling attack all around. I think even the two pacers are quite experienced, you know, whether it's uh, Farooqi and uh, Naveen Ul Haq have both played a lot of cricket, they both swing the ball as well. So, got a pretty good bowling attack, there's no doubt about it. I think their bowlers are some of the most sought-after bowlers in in this format uh, across the world in different leagues. Uh, we understand that that is going to pose a challenge to us and we, we are going to have to uh, play well and counter that. And, you know, we've got the skills and we've tried to create the balance and uh, the depth in the squad that allows us to uh, counter their uh, their bowling attack, not only spinners, their fast bowlers as well, counter their, uh, their bowling attack that, you know, hopefully we can get a par plus score or chase down whatever score that they set for us. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.